Got any oil? Yeah, that's my last one. Got any rice? Got any silver? You keep asking for that, but I'm all out. Got a bowl? Yeah. My bear eats it. It's dead. Right. You got any rice? You just asked for it. Hmm. I just asked for it. I want it back. We've been playing this for too long. Yep. We have. What's today? I think it's Friday. Oh my gosh, it's almost four o'clock. It's time for the day camp. Ah! I lost Hi, I'm Lay. And I'm Court. And we're the, the Meagers. Today, we're gonna go out into nature and just see what happens. We're gonna have a good time today, all right? So come along with us. So today, we're gonna show you how to blaze a trail. Now, you wanna find somewhere nice and wooded here. Somewhere that has a lot of trees, a lot of brush. Somewhere that we can, you know, use our machete oh, right, to make a trail. So, Lay is leading us here. Oh. Example of what you don't want to do when you're trailblazing. You want to get yourself a nice tool. This here machete, been with me way back. By the way, this is our dog, Echo. Say hi, Echo. She likes to play fetch. So you're walking through the woods. This way, meters. Sometimes a branch or two will get in the way. You just gotta chop it, all right? And then we keep going. All right, thanks. Thanks, Court. Help, 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 help. What's wrong? Help. Help, I got it. Oh, oh, thank <laughs> you. And then sometimes we'll come along a nice tree. And it just really looks like a good climbing tree. This tree here, it's a climbing tree. You know that I can tell it's a climbing tree? Yes. How? Because I'm going to climb it. Right. He's going to demonstrate the perfect climbing technique here. He's been doing this since he was, he was four years old. There he goes. Find the lowest branch and just go for it. Doing a great job. Good job, Lay. Oh. Good job. I'm getting it. There he goes. Look at him go. He's so majestic. Who took his one? You gotta find the moose. <laughs> you gotta climb the tree and find the moose. Oh, okay. <laughs> so our objective today is to locate the moose. We need to get the high ground on him. So Clay's gonna climb this tree and we're gonna give it our best finding the moose. There he goes. I'd say that's high enough, Lay. High enough. High enough. So now, we're gonna call the moose into us. Ready for the, ready for the moose call in three. Three, two, one. Ah! Oh, ah! oh, we got him! Good night, Moose! Now this is how you make friends with the moose. You take a drink, Hello. you get hydrated. Lay takes a drink, he gets hydrated. And then the moose takes a drink. Okay. 
Everybody's hydrated. Now we are hydration brothers and we belong to the hydration nation. That's how you find a moose, ladies and gentlemen. Bye, moose. All right. Keep going on Easter. You never want to cut this down. You always got to leave it grow so it becomes tall and majestic like a bunch of these trees. So that's about everything you need to know about blazing a trail. Right, Blake? Right, Court. Got any last words? Over and out. All right. See you next time. Me and the Maranatha Moose is going to show you how to make your own peanut butter mousse at home. First, you're going to start with a half cup milk and a half cup of cold brew. Always start with your liquids first. Next, you're going to take one heaping scoop of peanut butter. Throw that in your blender. Next, you're going to add a half cup of hot cocoa powder. Then you're going to add a handful of ice, about six to seven cubes. Next, you're going to put on the lid. Don't forget the lid. We've done that plenty of times before and it makes a big old mess. And press blend and blend away. Make sure that when you're blending, you have a random dance party. When you're done, choose your favorite glass. Pour all that peanut butter mousse on in there and drink and enjoy. Yum! Really? Really? Okay, all right, okay, okay, I got it. Yes, we will, we will. My dearest viewers, I am in need of your help. It has come to my attention that a lot of various items have gone missing. Missing, I tell you, missing, and they are very, very important items to the world, and these items are found in your house. And this is a team effort, so I'm gonna need everyone in your family to help with this one and bring back the needed items. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna call out the item that I need, you're gonna pause the video, and you're gonna go to retrieve that item. Once all have returned, then press play to reveal the next item. Continue on until you capture everything you need. So, are you ready? Good luck. The world is counting on you. So your first item is a dirty sock. So, pause this video, go and find dirty sock, bring it back. And when you come back, press play to retrieve the next item. Roll of toilet paper. Hairbrush. Piece of bread. A hat. Toothbrush, a cotton ball, left shoe, a game, and a stuffed animal. Yes. Yes. Oh, yes. Okay. All right. Congratulations. You have saved the day. Now, I want you to take a photo of everyone with all your items and send your picture to the email in the description above. And we look forward to seeing you next week. Thank you again for saving the day. I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my tomb till I met you. Oh, I was breathing the night, the night. Oh, all my failures I tried. You called my name, and I ran out of that grave. Out of the darkness, into your glorious day. 
You broke my name And I ran out of that grave Out of the darkness Into your glorious name Oh, now your mercy has saved my soul
who don't know, my name is Brandon Marchetti, and I was asked to actually share with you just a little bit about what God has been encouraging me and God has been doing on my heart. And so uh, today we're going to be talking about this big idea called contentment, right? So what content means, uh, to be content in things, or what contentment means, is that when everything is kind of going crazy or things are happening, I'm okay with what, where I'm at and what God is doing. So we obviously have seen this crazy world where things are happening and coronavirus is all over the place and the world just doesn't know what to do with that, right? So they're freaking out, right? They're freaking out about where am I going to, when is this gonna get better? I'm not gonna be able to go to prom. I'm not gonna be able to do sports. Uh, I'm buying toilet paper everywhere, right? You might've seen on TikTok or social media, your parents might've talked to you about how I can't find toilet paper at the stores, right? So all these people are are freaking out around us. And the coronavirus is something that's scary. It's something that is concerning. It's something that, oh man, I don't know what's gonna happen. I'm, I'm bummed that I'm missing school. I'm bummed that I can't hang out with my friends. It's really frustrating. I'm stuck in my house and I'm just tired of being stuck in my house. I'm with the same siblings and my parents and we're just ready to go back to normal. And so it's, it's perfectly natural that we sit there and we look at this tragedy, this hard thing that's going on, and go, I just want things to be normal. I've watched every Dude Perfect video. I've, done, I've watched every TikTok video, right? We have this frustration at what is happening, okay? And so why does that happen? Well, that happens because we have this discontentment with what is happening. We're not happy about it. We're upset, we're frustrated, okay? And so, man, what does the Lord say about contentment. What does he teach us? What does he want us to do? And we have to look at situations and stories in the Bible and were there situations where people, things were going on, things were crazy during these people's lives. Was that happening at all in the Bible, right? And we can be assured that just as we feel this craziness and this frustration, 
man, there's people in the Bible who feel that craziness and that frustration. I think of a couple that come to my mind. Um, the first one I think of is Paul, right? He talks about, man, he, Paul is put into prison. Prison is awful. They don't let you have your cell phone in prison, okay? So, and they don't let you have anything to play with in prison. So he's sitting there in house arrest in prison, right? So he's not allowed to leave. He has to stay where he's at. He doesn't know what's going to happen. He doesn't know um, what is going on. And all he's put in prison for is sharing the gospel. So he's telling people about Jesus. And the Roman Empire, where he's living at the time he's living, they put him in jail. Like, isn't that crazy? Could you imagine sitting in jail? And so he has a real reason to be frustrated, be worried, and be, what is going on? God, what are you going to do? Where do I, what do I do? And, and after a while, he's probably gotten bored. He's like, I'm tired of sitting here. There's things I want to go do. There's people I want to go see that I can't see. There's places he was traveling. He wants to go do these things. So what does he say? What happens with him? We can be encouraged that Paul in Philippians, actually in Philippians 4, talks about in all things I have found contentment. You found contentment? You're sitting in prison, bro. What are you talking about? You're content. Like, I wouldn't be content. I'm not content sitting in my house all the time, right? But he's sitting in prison and he says, I am content in all things. Well, why is he content? Well, then we find out later, he says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So even in these hard trials, he can sit there and go, man, God, you can strengthen me to do this. Well, how do I do that? How does God do that? What is God doing? Well, he goes on to say, man, when, I'm, when you're feeling anxiety, when you're feeling frustration, when you're not sure what's going to happen and you're freaking out, man, you think about the things that are good to think about. So he says, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is good, whatever is commendable, think about those things. And what does that do in Paul? Well, that brings, man, he starts to even out. He doesn't worry as much as he did. And so sometimes when we see these disasters and we see these situations and we look out around us, we kind of have one of two responses. We either start living in fear and we go, God, I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, and I might die, and, or I might get hurt, or someone I know might die. Or we can totally respond the other way. And we can be like, who cares? What does it matter? And that, we stop caring about what's going on. And so when we're looking at the coronavirus and everything that's happening, we can see where people are freaking out. And maybe that's you. Maybe you're freaking out. Maybe the other side is you, and you're just like, I don't care. I just want to play some video games and not worry about it. What happens is when we run into coronavirus, it's inevitable that it starts to impact us. It gives us something to worry about, right? When things feel out of control, when I can't figure out and I can't go coronavirus, stop, and I can't go to school and I can't go hang out with my friends, we start to worry or we start to get frustrated, right? And so we see situations in scripture where that happens. Paul's talking about it. Another person that we see this is David, right? King David in the Old Testament. Um, some of you might have seen the Veggie Tales where he steals the rubber ducky, right? We, we see this story where David is, is being chased by the king before him, King Saul, and Saul's trying to murder him. And David says, he writes Psalm 23, which talks about by your, your staff comforts me. You lead me by still waters. He writes in um, Psalm 63, verse 7 and 8, For uh, you have been my help, and in my shadow of wings I will sing for joy. My soul clings to you. Your right hand upholds me. So he, he leans on God in these moments. So now you're sitting there, you look at me and go, Brandon, I don't care about any of this. I'm not doing this. I'm not worried, Whatever. And I want you to look at what's kind of happening. You want to know how sometimes you can tell whether you're living in one of those spots where you're not content? Man, we start to desire other things, right? We start to go, God, I just want this. If you just gave me this, I would be happy. If I could just go outside, I'd be happy, right? Rather than finding the, the joy in where we're at. The other thing that happens is as we start to start to focus on ourselves, man, I, I don't want to be here anymore. I'm tired of this. It starts to look inward and we start to focus inward. 
And so that's where I want you to ask, where are you focusing on yourself? You wanna know how sometimes we focus on ourselves? Because our reactions to other people. Let me ask you this, when your parents ask you to do something, how do you respond? When your siblings are frustrating you because they're just being so annoying, how do you respond? Do you get angry with them? Do you get frustrated? Do you hit them back? When your mom goes, hey, can you clean your room? You go, ugh. And you go, fine, I'll just do it. How do you respond? Right? Because I can do that. I can get frustrated and I can get angry and I go, fine, I'll do it, but I'm not going to like it. And so my encouragement to you is how can we find joy and contentment with what's happening? It's hard. It is frustrating. But where can we rest and know that God is in control and I can cling to him, right? I can think about the things that are worthy. I can spend time with him. I can pray to him. I can honor him by honoring my parents and loving my siblings. I always have this phrase, um, when your parents ask you to do something, you need to do it right away. You need to do it the right way. And you need to do it in the right way. So, right, so I need to do it right away. As soon as my parents say, hey, do this, I'm like, okay, I'm going to do it, right? I need to do it the right way. So if they tell me to clean my room, I know what their expectations are, right? So I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it well. I'm not going to leave things on the ground. I'm not going to take everything and shove it into my closet. So as soon as my mom opens, it consumes her and it falls on her, right? And then I'm going to do it in the right way. Because if I sit there, mom and dad go, hey, I want you to take out the trash. And I go, Ugh, fine. Well, then I might as well not do it at all because my heart's not in the right place. And so that's what I want to encourage you. Look at your life. Where are you frustrated with what's happening? Where are you annoyed with what's happening? And take those annoying and that frustration to God because David does that in the Psalms. I encourage you to read the Psalms if you get the chance because David goes, God, what are you doing? Why have you forsaken me? Which means to forget, to leave, basically abandon him. And he goes, why have you done that? So we can do that. God, what are you doing? But David always turns back and goes, my soul clings to you. Man, God, I desire to be with you. And Paul does the same. I can do all things. I think about the things that are worthy, and that helps me with my anxiety. That helps me with my frustration. So where are you discontent? Where could you be loving your family more, honoring your parents more, praying for what's going on, loving people around you more, and worshiping God? I hope this has been encouraging for you. I pray that we can turn to scripture and be encouraged and find joy in what's happening today, even amidst all the frustrations, all the annoying things. I pray that you don't hit your siblings. I know it's hard. <laughs> it's hard to not be frustrated at them when they throw something at you, you got to throw it harder. Man, how can we love them? So, I'm praying for you guys. I'm praying that this ends soon. But man, I'm praying more that we, as people who identify as Christians, as Christians, we can learn to love God more, learn to love people more. Anyway, I'll talk to you guys later. And that, my friends, concludes episode one of the Maranatha Digital Day Camp. I hope that you join Winona and I next week for episode two. It'll be released at 4 p.m. on Friday. Also, don't forget to send in your photos from the scavenger hunt. We'd love to see the fun that you have had. Thank you, and have a great day. Bark, bark, bark.